On this week's show, we preview the second form's production of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. We recap last weekend's Allegro show and interview Lawrenceville alumnus and vice president of the Board of Trustees, Daryl Fitzgerald. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From the studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Guy L. Fogg. Hello and welcome to this week's show. A number of students have shared their end-of-term projects this week. On Monday, Honors Environmental Science students presented their newly constructed solar suitcases. On Wednesday, Laurentians who engaged in winter independent studies presented their findings and research in the Kirby Maffin Science Center. The finalists for the school-wide Woodrow Wilson Public Speaking Contest have been announced. Anika Bagaria, Grace Blacksill, Charlie Christofferson, Fiona Gould, and Liana Raguzzo will address the question, why should beauty matter, at a school meeting on March 23rd. A number of Laurentians were recently honored for their excellence in, in the academics, in the arts, and athletics. 16 students received Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Four varsity field hockey players were named to the 2017 National Field Hockey Coaches Association High School National Academic Squad. And third former Sahil Mahodra was one of three students to win the 2016-2017 Westminster Conservatory Piano Concerto Youth Competition. At Thursday school meeting, Lawrenceville celebrated its annual St. Baldrick's Foundation charity event. 13 students shaved their heads to raise money and awareness for the fight against childhood cancer. At the time of our show's release, the school raised over $20,840, with a special recognition to sophomore Linda Lee, who alone raised close to $5,000. Two major arts performances are taking place this weekend. Earlier this evening, the Impulse Comedy Troupe performed its final show of the term. Also tonight, Second Formers debuted their production of Romeo and Juliet. In collaboration with Mr. Dom's video journalism class, Rishi Mago brings us behind the scenes of Romeo and Juliet. I'm Anushka and I'm the production stage manager for Freshman Shakespeare this year. The production stage manager basically calls the show on the actual day, so I sit up on the God Box and I like give the light cues and the sound cues and just stuff to like the other people in the crew. What are you looking forward to most about working this production? Everyone coming together on the three performances and just having a lot of fun and showing everyone what our freshman class can do. Not only do we have to come together to act, we have to work backstage to get each other's props, we have to make the scenery, a lot of us help make the scenery, and we also have to ha help Mr. Campbell in kind of giving our input and helping just make this production a great one. So have there been any particular challenges that have faced you in the production? Definitely been learning my lines. But otherwise, it's just it's been a fun time, so the, the joy of doing this kind of makes it okay. Definitely memorizing the lines. I don't have a lot of them, but I'm not good at memorization. Only recently did we have a technical crew join us um, to kind of round out the full theatrical perspective. But as a team, we're working very well together. and. Uh, uh, when we come up with a problem, come to a problem in the, in the rehearsals or in the play, we tackle it as a group. It's really, really been great. What would you say is the best reason for people to come see the production? I think a lot of people are looking forward to that kiss. I think that's a great reason to come and watch it. <laughs> I'm always so excited about when the show is no longer in my control and it's really handed over to the freshman class. Um, in about two days, it literally becomes a full-on second form only run show. So that's all we have here from Freshman Shakespeare at the KAC. Back to you, Gael. Thank you, Rishi. You can watch the cast's final performance tomorrow evening at the Kirby Arts Center. Our celebration of Black History Month at Lawrenceville continues this week. Now we have our executive producer, Tism Logu, in the studio with us now. Tism. Thanks, Gael. Now joining us via Google Hangouts for the last of our three-part series on Black History Month is Daryl Fitzgerald, Vice President of the Board of Trustees and one of the first black students to attend Lawrenceville. So Mr. Fitzgerald, what led you to come to the Lawrenceville School in the fall of 1964? Uh, well, actually, uh, Lawrenceville sort of found me. Uh, I came home from school one day and my mother said we had a call from a school called Lawrenceville and they'd like to talk to you. And I said, okay. She said, how would you like to go to prep school? I said, well, that sounds cool, but what is a prep school? I went to schools that were building. She said, it's a school that prepares you for college. So I said, well, yeah, that sound, you know, sounds good. So they said, they want to interview you. My father drove me up to Barnesville. When we came in the gate, I remembered um, saying, what a nice area. Where's the school? He said, this is the school. I said, yeah, I know, honestly, but where's, like, the school? Well, I'm thinking building. He said, all of this is the school. So... Um, at that point, I said, man, I didn't know the high schools existed like that. I thought we had driven too far and gone up to Princeton. So um, 
that was kind of how I, you know, I got to Lawrenceville. I was in, uh, I was in the top homeroom in eighth grade, and uh, I guess the guidance counselor gave Lawrenceville my name. When you arrived on campus, what was your experience like? But you know, it was it was great um, in terms of the education, the hardness, uh, being able to sit in a classroom of only twelve and not twenty five or, or so as it was in my junior high school. Uh, you know, the health system and um, and there were really kind of three three different groups of people. Probably a third of them had gone to integrated schools, and so it was no big deal to uh, to be with an African American student. The other third probably had not, but I extended the olive branch and said, "If you're willing to befriend me, I will be. I, you know, I'd like to befriend you." And you know, sort of won them over. Then the other third were not me; they just didn't engage with me as much. Um, so you know, which was which is understandable. You know, if you're not familiar with with, with certain people or things, you know, there's, you know, you had a choice to sort of totally engage or not be as engaged. Uh, but, but I don't remember anyone ever being sort of mean to me. As the Vice President of the Board of Trustees, what would you like to do to address or improve upon diversity and inclusion at Lawrenceville? Well, one thing that's important is that diversity uh, occur on all levels. It just can't be student body. It needs to, re be, needs to be reflected in st senior staff, reflected in uh, faculty. Uh, all across the board, it's, it's just very important that the pendulum of diversity has swung in a great direction. We don't want that pendulum to swing back in the wrong direction. It's really important that Lawrenceville reflect the demographics of what happens outside the fence. I mean, this is a world we live in that's multicultural, and uh, and tolerance is important. And it's just it's just important that at your age you have exposure to people that are different than you. For many black students on campus, you and Mr. Lyle's battle are viewed as our grandfathers or forefathers to an extent. What message would you like to give to past, present, and future Laurentians of color? The first one is um, is uh, take advantage of Lawrenceville. I mean, you, 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 were, you went through a very, very arduous and stringent selection process to get there. No one just falls into Lawrenceville. I mean, you, you're selected and you deserve to be there. That's number one. Uh, so it's important to perform. You know, to take advantage of it and do your absolute God-given best. Not only, um, you know, out of respect for those people that came before you and the sacrifices that have been made by your parents and alumni. When they write a check to, for the Lawrenceville Fund, that money could go to something else. But they're giving it to the school to help support you. Um, so that's, you know, really important that you don't just take up space. It's, it's, it's always cool to hang with your peeps and being with people that are very much like you. But, you know, you should take advantage of of, of the opportunity to, to interact and get to know people that are very different than you. Um, and it is important to make you know yourself proud and your, your parents proud because you've, you've been given an absolute golden opportunity. You're there now, so you don't realize it. But as you get away from Lawrenceville and the years go by, you look back and realize how stellar the education was, you know, that the house system was tremendous, the extracurriculars, you know, athletics, you know, being able to to, to sort of live with people in, a, in a, an environment like Lawrenceville is very supported. It engenders leadership. It's, um, it's a great place to go to high school. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Chisholm. The 4th Editorial Board of L10 has been elected. The team will begin production following the spring break. Aiden Duffy will take over as the show's anchor and managing editor, and Alex Small will be the show's executive producer. Senior section correspondents will be Annie Haight for news and Chloe Ashton for sports, Brittany Sun for arts, and Jeremy Huang for features. The technology team will be Toby Logu, will be the next head of videography. Justin Wong will serve as head of video editing. Alex Sukach will head our graphics team. Christian Liu will be our head of photography. Alex Liu will head our writing team. And Madeline Reinhardt will be the head of web and social media. On Saturday evening, several students performed in the final Allegro show of the term. Now we have a recap of the night's most memorable performances. Oh, take me to the waterfall. I wanna feel the rush again Oh, take me to the waterfall Let's stand on the edge, hand in hand I wanna feel the rush again It's your love now, we is no
someday you'll join us And the world will be as one But not in that way As men say Only fools rush in But I can tell Falling in love with you Tonight marks the final episode of The Third Board and my final time anchoring the show. I'm feeling a lot of things right now. This week, much like the 47 episodes we've shared to this point, has drained me emotionally. Most of all, I'm feeling grateful for the opportunity of my life, for the memories, for the mistakes and laughs we've had along the way, and for the company of the greatest, smartest, and most fiercely dedicated humans I've been so fortunate to roam this basement with. Gil, it has been one hell of a roller coaster. I'm indebted to you for your trust, faith, patience, and teaching me how to see a story. Lisa, you are my rock. Thank you for hearing my every petty gripe and for holding all of us to the highest standard. Nick Lewis, thank you for teaching me your love of language. It has made my life and our program so much richer, and I hope your journey is fine spun gold. If there is one thing that has become clear this week, it's that the mentors that I've had at this school, of which there are more than we can fit into 10 minutes, hold a true investment in my life. Their mark is deep and lasting and it will carry me forward. If I could ask for one thing, it's that every student find someone who is unafraid of committing their success, embraces their setbacks and helps them grow. Whether they be your housemaster, public safety officer, coach or club advisor, I sincerely hope that there's someone whom you can trust. Those of you who are familiar with the show know that we always end with all of us here at L10. So for the final time, from Ryan behind the camera, Alex at the script, Lisa shooting our photos, Olivia keeping us social, Christian and Darren combing through hours of footage and hundreds of graphics, Adia bringing you the art in our community, Alex with the story of the day, Toby adding some spice and Chisholm keeping everyone in check. We thank you for joining us. Aiden Duffy, we'll see you right back here on March 31st. Good night.